So now we're on the fourth movie of working with rigging, and we're going to deal with bone influences. We've got our character boned. We have reparented the bones to the skeleton so they work correctly. And now we're simply going to adjust and tweak how the body parts interact with the skeleton when we start moving things around. If you have access to the working files, you can open rigging 0604 and pick up right from here if you would like to. Now, as we've put this rig together, we haven't done some of the more complex things that we explored a little bit in the earlier section on bones, namely constraint controlling bones if we wanted to have muscles flex here, or if when the character bends over, the stomach distends a little bit, those kind of cool things, or if they tilt the head back and the neck stretches a little bit. Those are refinements that you can put into your rig but I didn't do that for the sake of making this a little bit faster. Rigging really is pretty straightforward. So let's go ahead and now take a look at the influence of the bones and see what we need to adjust and what we don't. I'm going to go ahead and zoom in just a little bit. And now I'm going to grab the time slider down here in the timeline and simply drag this down you know, to something like 30. It doesn't really matter. We're not doing an animation right now. I'm simply doing this to prove what's going to go on. With the monster bone layer selected, I can go ahead and come over here to the manipulate bone tool, which is keyboard shortcut Z. I'll press that, and now since we're in a live timeline here, not the zero time frame, I can go ahead and move this character around just like we would want to do. Move it back like that. It looks like maybe I need to lower the arm down just a little bit. And this is why you start working with bones and tweak them up. It takes a little bit to get a rig set. Simply getting the bones in place is one of the things, and then making sure that they rotate correctly together is another. What I'm looking for now when we look for bone influences is really strange stuff happening at joints. Let's see if we've got anything going on. You know, that's, that's looking okay. I get kind of this, this broken forearm look, though. So it lets me know I need to adjust that a little bit. The hand here, yeah, I kind of like the way it's moving the fingers a little bit, but if that goes back too far, I get a strange little item happening here. Let's look at what else is going on. I can go ahead and move this arm out. That's looking okay. Oh, look, we've got a strange elbow joint going on here. So that will need to be corrected. Hand, we're getting a little bit of flexing going on. How about the head here? I can tilt that back. If we grab the top of the neck, that moves a little bit more. Grab that middle bone on the torso. The arms are connected to that. So that's something we'd want to play with carefully because it looks like the shoulders come out of socket just a little bit. If we go ahead and grab this next lower one on the, the torso there, then we can see that. And then the legs, well, we've got a leg kind of sticking out here, so that is going to need to be readjusted just a little bit. Looking for joints, uh, marginally passable there. So this is starting off to be okay. We see some realignments we need to do. Well, this is how we do it when we go back to it thing we need to do is, first of all, go ahead and either move our bones here. We can select the bone tool and watch what happens when we do that. We can select that, but we can't really work with it. We can grab the translate tool and move that around, but we start getting some strange things going on. That's why we want to take the timeline back to time frame zero. Let's see, we get a little bit of motion here. The first thing I'm going to do is move these body parts around just a little bit so that they bend the way they're supposed to. And I do that using the Bone Offset tool again. When I click that, everything lines up the way it needs to. And go ahead and select this. That needs to come down somewhat. And we certainly know this leg needs to come in just a little bit more. This next leg, yeah, possibly we can bring that out just a little bit as well. So now let's look at the influences. Everything is assembled right now because I have the offset bone tool selected, but when I come back to the bone strength tool and click that, the character explodes into its constituent parts again and lets me take a look a little more closely at the influences around it. This is when you click on the bone and we studied how to work with bone influences in an earlier section. And I can dial this down a little bit to get, no, and the hands I'm actually going to make a little bit larger so that we don't get the strange finger action going on right there. For the head, I want that to actually encompass most of the head. I'm going to come down, I'm going to reduce the upper arm influence a little bit, and actually reduce by clicking and dragging left or right the 
forearm influence. I want to make sure that it captures everything around it, but the hand I want to make sure is large enough to cover everything and go back up into the arm a little bit. Likewise for the legs, this is a case where I may want to realign the bone. We'll take a look at it when we get it put together here in just a second. The foot's covering everything, so that's, that's looking okay. This is just a simple trial and error process. The last foot down here I want to make a little bit larger. Let's come back to time 30, 30 frames in. And now let's see how our character moves. I'll go ahead and do keyboard shortcut Z or you can direct select the manipulate bones tool. And we'll go ahead and, and take a look at that. Now, for my liking, this arm is rotating a little bit too high. So I'm not going to spend all the time finessing this skeleton and how it plays, but see now that this is definitely a process of trial and error to get everything refined. I would move this bone down just a little bit so that it rotates more around the sh center of the shoulder than the top. Here on the forearm, as I bend that, we get a little bit of strange behavior here, so I might want to expand that influence. Likewise, we can see that happening right here, same joint tissue there. On the leg here, as we stretch that out, it doesn't look too neat when we go backwards, but it looks okay with forward. So this is where I would just go back and simply play with the shape a little bit more. We can see uh, as we move the timeline slider back and forth that we're starting to get a little motion. But that's what we're going to take a look at in our next section on animation.